Planes can't fly without it. Rolls-Royce, Boeing and Airbus know it. And now, Russia's building a mega factory to control it. Titanium, the metal that makes modern flight possible. And Moscow's newest tool for global leverage. In the shadows of sanctions, a new industrial titan rises. What does this mean for aviation, supply chains and the West's future? You're about to find out. Subscribe now to uncover the rise of Russia's titanium empire and why the West is worried. Before we start, let's find out why titanium is a game changer in aviation. Titanium isn't just another metal, it's the backbone of modern aviation. Imagine a material that's as strong as steel, yet nearly half the weight. It can handle scorching temperatures, resist rust, and maintain its strength under the extreme pressure of high-altitude flight. That's why titanium is indispensable in building critical components like jet engines, fuselage sections, and landing gear. For decades, aerospace titans like Boeing, Airbus, and Rolls-Royce have depended on this metal to push engineering limits. Before the Russia-Ukraine conflict erupted in 2022, as much as 50% of aerospace-grade titanium for these major manufacturers came from one place, Russia's Vysempo Avizma. This single supplier had become the lifeline for the Western aerospace supply chain. But when international sanctions hit in response to the invasion, that lifeline was abruptly severed. Suddenly, aviation's most critical material was caught in a geopolitical tug of war, and the ripple effect shook the entire global supply system. Russia's dominance in the titanium world wasn't by chance. It was a carefully orchestrated strategy. At the heart of this empire is VSMPO Avizma, a giant that produces almost all of Russia's titanium sponge, the raw form of the metal, and once held as much as 30% of the global share for high-quality aviation-grade titanium. What makes this company unique isn't just the scale, but the process. Unlike many other suppliers who only handle parts of the titanium refinement and production process, VSMPO Avisma is vertically integrated. That means from mining the raw material to refining it into sponge, alloying it, shaping it into precision parts and shipping it out. It all happens under one roof. This efficiency gives Russia an enormous edge and you know, the backing of Rostec, a major state-owned defence conglomerate that holds a sizeable stake in the company, ensures it's not just a business. It's actually a strategic arm of Russian industrial policy. This level of control means the Kremlin can leverage titanium supply not only for profit, but also for geopolitical influence. Before 2022, VSMPO Avizma supplied titanium not just to Russian firms, but to virtually all major Western aerospace players. That gave Moscow a quiet, yet powerful seat at the table in the global aviation industry. Now here's where things get even more interesting. In response to Western sanctions and efforts to decouple from Russian supply chains, Moscow has gone on the offensive. VSMPO Avizma is building an enormous next-generation titanium facility, an industrial colossus engineered to operate entirely outside Western control. This isn't just a bigger factory, it's actually a sanctions-proof complex designed with self-reliance in mind. The expansion includes scaling up sponge production, enhancing in-house alloying capabilities, and increasing machining operations to directly produce aerospace-ready parts. Why is that a big deal? because it allows Russia to bypass third-party processors and shippers, entities more easily targeted by Western regulations and embargoes. This means titanium components can go directly from Russian foundries to aircraft assembly lines in countries not aligned with Western sanctions. If the factory hits its full stride, it won't just replace lost business from Boeing and Airbus. It could, in fact, redefine the entire global titanium market and make Russia the world's go-to titanium superpower. According to Argus Media and Efeso Consulting, if VSMPO Avizma successfully scales this mega-project, it could single-handedly rival or even surpass the combined sponge capacity of several Western producers. That's a staggering shift. This new hub could serve as the backbone for supplying not just Russian aerospace needs, but clients in China, India and Latin America markets hungry for dependable and affordable titanium parts. You might assume Western aerospace companies have cut off all Russian titanium. That's what their press releases suggest. In early 2022, Boeing announced it would stop purchasing directly from Russian suppliers. Rolls-Royce echoed that message. 
but reality paints a different picture. Behind the scenes, titanium kept flowing. Investigations have shown that Boeing's titanium supply chain remained tangled with Russian sources well into 2023, often routed through complex webs of intermediaries or processed in third-party countries. Airbus even secured a special exemption from Canada's sanctions regime so it could continue sourcing from VSMPO Avisma. The reason is simple, Russian titanium is hard to replace. The aerospace-grade titanium market is extremely demanding. Engineers need alloys with precise chemical compositions, traceability, and consistent mechanical properties. These aren't things you can ramp up overnight. Most alternatives from other regions either lack the consistency or are significantly more expensive. Even minor deviations in the titanium used for jet engines or airframes can result in catastrophic performance issues. So, for now, the West is caught in a difficult bind, publicly distancing itself from Russian titanium while quietly maintaining supply lines where possible. You know, this issue doesn't just affect Western manufacturers. Around the world, countries with smaller aerospace industries, including India, Brazil and Indonesia, also rely on Russian titanium. That's because it's known not only for its quality, but also its reliability. For these nations, access to affordable, high-grade titanium is really key to competing in the global aviation sector. Meanwhile, US-based companies like ATI and Helmet Aerospace are racing to fill the gap. But there's a catch. Producing titanium for aerospace use isn't just about mining or refining. It requires a lengthy certification process involving regulatory bodies like the FAA and EASA that can take years to complete. This means even if a new supplier emerges tomorrow, it could be several years before their product is approved for use in aircraft. Time isn't on the West's side. As this gap lingers, Russia is turning its titanium dominance into geopolitical leverage. In recent months, the Kremlin has threatened to curb exports of not just titanium, but other critical materials like nickel and uranium, metals that many Western industries also rely on. It's a calculated move to remind the world that economic sanctions are not a one-way street. If Moscow decides to weaponize its resource base, the consequences for global manufacturing and defense industries could be, well, absolutely massive. So, what comes next in this high-stakes game? Well, several key developments could shape the future of the titanium trade. First, we need to watch how quickly non-Russian producers can achieve full certification for aerospace-grade titanium. This is a complex, expensive and time-consuming task, but it's absolutely crucial if the West wants to break free from Russian dependence. Next, the timeline of Russia's mega-factory rollout will be critical. Will it meet its ambitious production goals? If it does, it could saturate the global market with cheaper, high-quality titanium, making it even harder for Western alternatives to compete. Finally, there's the geopolitical aspect. Will Russia impose tighter export controls to punish countries supporting Ukraine? Or will it use titanium as a bargaining chip in future diplomatic negotiations? At the same time, will Western nations respond by investing heavily in domestic capacity or offering subsidies to local producers? There's no easy answer yet, but you know one thing is clear. The future of aviation, and potentially even broader manufacturing sectors, could hinge on how this titanium arms race plays out. Faced with the reality of their dependence on Russian titanium, Western powers have begun to act. The United States, in particular, has recognised the vulnerability and is shifting gears. One of the most promising areas of development lies in titanium recycling. As demand for aerospace-grade titanium rises, so does the opportunity to extract it from retired aircraft, industrial waste and other post-consumer scrap. Recycling titanium is not new, but today, it's being transformed into a high-tech, high-volume enterprise. Currently, over one-third of the United States titanium sponge equivalent comes from recycled material, and that number is poised to grow. One company making major strides is Iperion X, based in Virginia. Their plan? To scale up and process more than 10,000 metric tons of recycled titanium annually, enough to meet a significant share of aerospace demand. This approach not only cuts dependence on foreign suppliers, but also dramatically reduces environmental impact compared to traditional mining and smelting. Yet, challenges remain. 
Producing aerospace-grade titanium from scrap isn't as simple as melting it down and reusing it. The material must meet really stringent performance and traceability requirements, and each batch has to be, you know, precisely formulated. Fortunately, technological advances in sorting, alloy purification, and additive manufacturing are making it more feasible. Still, scaling these processes to industrial levels will require substantial investment, policy support, and, well, quite a bit of time. Europe faces its own dilemma. The continent currently lacks any significant titanium sponge production capability, making it entirely dependent on imports. Recycling exists, but much of that infrastructure is centered in the United States, which, honestly, just complicates supply security even further. In response, the European Union introduced the Critical Raw Materials Act, a legislative initiative aimed at building a more resilient supply chain. It sets clear goals. 10% of key materials should be mined within the EU, 40% should be processed locally, and at least 25% should come from recycled sources by the year 2030. It's an ambitious plan, but as with most policy blueprints, implementation remains the real challenge. Meanwhile, attention has turned to Ukraine, a country sitting atop some of the richest titanium reserves in Europe. In theory, these reserves could help supply European needs, but in practice, the ongoing war and lack of infrastructure make rapid development unlikely. It will take years of investment, security and peace before Ukraine can become a reliable titanium supplier. No discussion about global supply chains is complete without mentioning China. The world's second largest economy has long been a dominant player in critical minerals. With advanced refining and processing capabilities, China is well positioned to capitalize on any titanium vacuum left by sanctions or decoupling. However, when it comes to aerospace-grade titanium, China faces scrutiny. While it produces a large volume of titanium and related alloys, there are questions around consistency and quality control in high-stakes aerospace applications. Western companies remain cautious about fully integrating Chinese titanium into aircraft supply chains due to differences in regulatory oversight, transparency and geopolitical risks. Still, as China continues investing in research and development and manufacturing infrastructure, it could become a more serious contender in the titanium market. Now here's where things get truly futuristic, the concept of circularity. Instead of relying solely on virgin material, the West is now exploring how to create closed-loop titanium supply chains. Imagine this, old aircraft are retired, disassembled, and their titanium parts are melted down, purified, and remade into new components using precision three-dimensional printing. The result? A sustainable sovereign supply chain controlled entirely by allied nations, immune to geopolitical shocks. This vision is already beginning to take shape. Additive manufacturing companies are, you know, developing ways to use recycled titanium powder to 3D print new components that meet rigorous aerospace standards. Governments are investing in pilot programs to scale up these innovations, and major aerospace firms are partnering with recyclers and researchers to make the dream a reality. The benefit? Well, it's lower costs, smaller carbon footprints, and greater control over every link in the supply chain. But building a truly circular economy takes more than technology. It requires regulation, incentives and cooperation across industries and borders. The hope is that within the next decade, the West can develop a model that shifts reliance away from geopolitically volatile sources and toward a cleaner, closed-loop system. In the grand scheme of global power, titanium might not seem like a game-changer. But when you consider that every advanced jet engine, every modern airframe, and, well, countless defence systems rely on this metal, it becomes clear. Control over titanium is control over the future of flight, warfare, and even space travel. Russia's new mega factory represents more than just industrial ambition. It's a calculated move to reassert control over a critical supply chain at a time when Western economies are trying to reduce their dependencies. The West is responding, but not fast enough. Recycling, innovation and policy efforts are all underway, but scale and speed remain major obstacles. The real question is, who will win the titanium war? Will Russia's vertically integrated empire dominate the next generation of aerospace? Or will the West's bet on circular supply chains and technological innovation allow it to break free from dependence and reclaim its industrial independence? 
Only time will tell. But one thing is certain, the future of aviation, and perhaps even geopolitical stability, may hinge on who controls this golden metal of the skies. If you found this video informative and eye-opening, make sure to like, share it with a friend who loves tech and geopolitics, and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next chapter in this unfolding saga.